Well, a beautiful location, some great finds, and one crazy find that turns out to be very rare. Well, welcome back to Finding America. It is really great to see you here. I tell you, after last week's really bad snowstorm, it felt so good to get back out there in the swing of things. And I had just the spot to do it. I'd found an old home site on the old maps at historicarials.com. Now, once I found that, I went over to the Tennessee Property Viewer website to see who owned the land. And as luck would have it, the county owned the land, and we were free to detect it. Well, after hiking quite a ways into the woods, we found the remains of the old barn, and it was magnificent. It was an excellent example of an early 1900s turn-of-the-century barn. We quickly dropped our backpacks, got geared up, and started swinging. And we started finding things right away from the original occupants of the home. And we got some interesting glimpses into how they lived their lives in the mountains of East Tennessee in the early 1900s. Well, to my right over here is a big, huge creek. And when I was looking at the old maps here, I could see there was an old homestead on this site at one time. And Chris gave me a holler because he found the chimney stack. Now, it's old brick about halfway up, and then they added some newer brick. To, they might have added a second floor to the house. You can kind of tell where the brick changes and was added on to later so I'm kind of guessing they might have had a second floor that's cool looking. it's awesome and uh, there's been some uh, critters here that made a home in the hearth <laughs> no gun barrel no no gun barrel holding it up huh thanks to aqua sugar for letting me check <laughs> <laughs> well that's pretty cool that's pretty old Another house was here in 1930, and that's about all I know, so it could be turn of the century, it could be earlier. They do look like... A lot hmm. of those bricks are, uh, there's no holes in them. Yeah. Old. The old handmade bricks, but we're just going to, it's pretty thick in here, but uh, if you look over there, there's another sign of a homestead if you're out in the woods. There's a nice uh, uh, bush there. and uh, plants there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely... Now over here too we have some stacked rock over there so yeah. we're just gonna bebop around here there's a wall back there maybe we'll get lucky and find a well so pretty cool but i wanted to give you an idea of where we are now chris came up to me and he made an awesome discovery now if you guys watch my channel you know back at the mansion we had this as a mystery item and uh, a lot of you now. we know what it is now but look <laughs> at this thing it's the complete gyroscope toy. Yeah. Said what, 30s, 40s? Yeah, maybe? 30s, 40s, could be 20s. Yeah, I guess you would spin it with the iron on this way, and this was attached to that somehow. That's amazing. He found it behind the chimney stack. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't wasn't really buried. You just got the signal. A couple of inches down, ring up, real nice. Yeah, I bet because this rings up beautiful. Yeah. But isn't that awesome? Wow, to find a complete one. Man. Cool, man. Whew. Very, very cool. Nice first find. Yeah. Well, Chris is working around that chimney area. Now, I'm in what was the front yard. There's an old roadbed here by the creek. And if you look over here, there's an old flower bed. And the bulbs are already coming up. So I'm working over here and my first decent target was giving me a uh, 13 and I got the top to, this is a collar to a squeeze tube, toothpaste or who knows, but you can see where the uh, cap would have screwed onto it. But nothing on it that I can see, but uh, pretty cool little first find. Well, for those who are wondering, I am running Field One uh, two-tone stock coil 
and I was getting a 15 right next to this old flower bed. You see how much moss is built up on those stones. And I dug down, and I think I got something pretty cool. I think I have an old ring. That's an old plated one. As soon as I saw it, I just grabbed the camera. It was kind of neat. It's got a root growing through it. There we go. Huh. Pretty neat. Well, I'll get that cleaned up, get you a better look at it, but that's a nice little piece there. And uh, see what else we get out here. Well, another interesting little target, just a couple of feet from where I got that ring. Uh, give me an 18. I dug down, and it's some type of little metal cap. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting that I'd show it to you. I am really not sure what it went on. Could have been just about anything, but it definitely has some age. And uh, just wanted to give you a look at that one. I have Chris called me over. He said he got another pocket knife there you go another one to keep on the streak I think we got a bunch of those this year or this year yeah, last for, year <laughs> uh, every week yeah <laughs> we usually get one it's missing the scales with the shield still on it that's pretty cool yeah I like that all right man I mean, we'll keep on plugging away here yeah. Well, I checked in with Chris. He was hunting on the other side of the property here. A hey, toy gun. Keeping the streak alive, yeah. man. Yeah. Never fails. Wow. This one is a Stallion 38. Wow. It's in two pieces, but it's complete. Pretty uh, cool. Sort of. <laughs> that barrel's got some cool design on it. Yeah, I'll get that one cleaned up, but... It's not a Hubley. It's got a... An N on it, you said? An N, yeah. I have to look it up. Well... And keep the streak alive on the cap guns. Yeah, that's a neat one. That's a big one. Very cool. Well, when you were a kid in the 1950s and you were watching Roy Rogers and Lone Ranger every day, there was nothing better than going out there with your cap gun and reenacting those old episodes of the Old West. And what better cap gun to have than a nickel six shooter that was made right in the heart of Texas. Now these amazing guns were made in Jacksonville, Texas between 1955 and 1965 when the company was eventually sold. And they were well known for their high quality and realistic guns. Now when you pulled the trigger, the cylinder would advance, the bullet would fire, and smoke would actually come out of the barrel of the gun. I can only imagine how much fun those kids were having with that Nichols gun out there in the foothills of the East Tennessee Mountains. And we had about 40 acres on this property to explore, so we decided to go out and check the rest of the property out. And it's amazing to think that this entire place was cleared farm fields and beautifully stacked stone walls. And while I was out there, I kept marveling at how much work it must have taken to maintain that property. And today, honestly, you would hardly even know what it used to look like because it's been long abandoned and it's reverted back to thick woods and dense brush. Well, okay, we're going to do the curse of a live dig. Mainly I wanted to film it because we've been out walking around these woods for two hours and this is the first good signal. I just want to document that we actually got a signal in here. <laughs> but it is Solid a, 80 on the AT Max. Yeah, and it's ringing 25 on the Equinox and it's it's uh, small and tight. So I figure, hey man, let me just jinx it and film it. That is the highest signal I've heard in a while. Yeah. It's probably a really that nice wasn't shot. A, that wasn't show. a ball jar lid. Yeah. Let's see. Well, it's not, definitely was not deep. It's probably what? a clad dime. <laughs> what? Oh, I see it. It's a coin. It is a coin. I'll be darned. 
Yeah, probably Memorial. <laughs> <laughs> it does have Lincoln, but... Come on. It was a little high for a weedy. Now we're gonna get really excited if it's a weedy because it's been a little slow the last hour, yeah. so I think it is. You would have seen the building by now. Yeah, I think uh my eyes ain't working. It's a weedy. Oh holy moly. <laughs> it's green too. Yeah. Well, rather than make you watch two and a half minutes of a weedy, I'll be right back with 1947. Him. Oh, he beat me too. <laughs> 47. <laughs> Well, we spent a few hours exploring the property and honestly with not much success. So we ended up back at the house site and we started making some interesting finds once again. Well, we are back at the house site after we did our orbit around the area here. Uh, got a 13, dug down and looks like I have an old uh, spoon or fork. Oh, check it out. Very cool design. Haven't pulled it out. Oh, sweet. It's a butter knife. Man, you don't find those. At least I don't. That is way cool. That's a great design on it. Kind of Art Deco. Oh, I like that a lot. Well, very cool. Nice little find. Well, I was just going between the area from the barn over to the house site. Got a 12 and I brushed it off. I have no idea what this is. It's kind of interesting though. And thought I'd show it to you. Yep, I am just not sure what that is. I'll get it cleaned up, give you a better look at it. But uh, pretty unusual. Well, that last unusual item I dug right there. And I just continued my way down here. Got another 12. Check it out. I got another one. This one's in a little better shape. Uh, still don't know what it is. <laughs> but I've got two of them. I can definitely say that. Well, 10 yards further on, get another 12. And I got another one. Holy cow. Man, I tell you what, I hope these are really rare and valuable. Because I have three of them now. That is nuts. Now I really want to know what these are. Well, I did end up figuring out what those were. They were actually chrome ornaments from a child's western gun belt and holsters. There were definitely some happy kids playing out there on the farm. Well, I was getting a real nice 21 signal here, dug down and I've taken a peek at it, save a little bit of time, but I got a nice early weedy, very green, and uh, this one's going to be a 1919, so I am happy to have that. Finally got a pretty old coin here. Well, right after I found that, Chris came walking up to me through the woods and said he had some things to show me. He'd found an old dump not far from the chimney stack and suggested that we dig it for a while. And I had to say, boy, am I glad Chris found that dump. Well, Chris came and got me because he found a kind of a mid-century dump. On That's top. Some, this is all on top, too. On top. Who knows what's underneath well, there. He's got some pretty nice stuff. Look at that Welch's. Welch's grape juice. I remember buying it. Well, not buying it. I was too young to afford it. <laughs> Drink down here younger. I remember drinking out of it. Yeah. Uh, Wow. This was kind of neat. I think it's a chili can. That is awesome. Just right chili. I don't know the age old, old, on it. Old-fashioned chili. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want that new-fashioned stuff. No, no, no. Mm -mm. That's the coolest thing, right? This is my favorite find. I used to collect old beer cans and yeah. soda cans. Oh, that's awesome. I'd say that's probably 54 or 55 with that logo. Yeah, and look, they had, to, they had to sit there and punch a hole in it to drink it. Flat top can, they're called. Yeah. Hoping for some cone tops down there. That's where uh, I got some bottles too. Got yeah, a little uh, cobalt. Not oh. too old. Oh, this is a uh, bromo seltzer. Bromo seltzer. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I feel like we found a token for that at some point. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Uh, mini. Probably, what's it say on the bottom? Extract. Made, made in USA. It's old. 
L and F. And then this one, here's the, had a label on it still. Well, shampoo. <laughs> Tiny shampoo bottle. That's awesome. But well, I had to. And you got a couple of things I like. The Colgate Ribbon Dental Cream. That is going to be 50s. Yeah. And a Crest toothpaste tube. That probably, one. this one's probably 60s, late 50s. 70s maybe. Could be 70s. That's kind of a mix down there. I like it. So we're going to go down there and uh, dig around, see what else we can get. But that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I like that. I love the Coke can. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool logo. Out the shelter. Oh, look, there's still some in it. <laughs> huh, is well, that cool? we're having a ball. Look at all the stuff that we've dug so far. In what, 15 minutes? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. We got some really nice Coke bottles. And uh, this one is from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And I actually had a friend of mine who actually owned the old bottling company building in Hattiesburg. So that is pretty cool. And this one is from Morristown, Tennessee. And then I got one. Uh, that's another Morristown. And we got one from Kentucky. What was the? I can't Middlesboro. Middlesboro. Yep, there's Middlesboro, Kentucky. So it's a nice uh, 40s, 50s Coke bottles. A uh, lot, lot of Pepsis from the 60s, late 50s. Got a Mrs. Butterworth syrup bottle. What's that? Oh, Alka-Seltzer. Still got the lid on it. Look at it down in there. Wow. And this is really cool too. We got some awesome looking blue and white. An oriental plate. That is awesome. And you know when the, your mom and dad said squeeze that tube to get the last bit out? This guy really squeezed the tube. And they use your Listerine. <laughs> yep, Listerine. And we got some <laughs> Troutman's bottle. Uh, a couple Troutman's. I'm not actually sure what that is. I'll have to look that up. And a really nice ball jar over there, and a couple. I know a bunch of you guys recognize this one. That's Old Spice. <laughs> That's neat. No, so, no, we're going to keep on digging here and uh, see what else comes out. But it, it's everywhere. Well, Chris just pulled out a nice one. I thought it was ketchup. That's no. Royal Crown. Yeah, Royal Crown. I don't want to rub that too much, but. Yep. Uh, I got a date. It's really. Yeah. That's not a very good stamp. 47 maybe? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. That's good. <clears throat> cool deal. There you go. Well, I gave Chris the camera because I've got two soda bottles. One's a Coke. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that Pepsi. Pepsi. Look at that. They're <laughs> everywhere. Oh my Where's gosh. that one from? Another place, I think. Oh. Oh. Nope, Morristown. Morristown again? Tennessee. How cool. Oh, look at them all out there. It's crazy. That we got some really killer uh, a collection. early Listerines. And these have the old caps on them. The Listerine Pharmaceutical Company cap. <laughs> and a couple different uh, bare aspirin bottles. A tiny one. Yeah, it's just everywhere. Everywhere we're digging. See, here's a, there's another bottle. There's a jar. Just everywhere. So we're going to keep on going, and uh, we get something good, we'll be right back. Well, just digging my way up the hillside, and look what popped out. Got a spoon. Pretty nice one, too. Oh, heck yeah. It's stainless. But probably from the same era. Probably looking 50s or so. So uh, I will definitely take that. It was a uh, kind of a cool thing. It comes, ugh, I can't even talk. It's getting a little cold out here. That was kind of a cool thing to see come flying out of the ground. Well, after digging all these Royal Crown Pepsi and Cokes, finally got something a little bit different. Got an old frosty root beer bottle. Actually, pretty darn good shape. Have the graphics still on it, but you can't touch it too much. It'll just wipe right off the bottle. But that's pretty cool. Very nice bottle. Well, we're finding a little bit of everything out here. Uh, dug up a wheel. It's got the original pinstriping on it. It was originally painted green. And uh, every time you move the dirt, something else pops out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Check this thing out. It says US up here. 
United States Lock and Hardware Company, six inch. That is, I guess it would be a sliding. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, reversible. I like it though. Pretty neat. Definitely. Man, Chris reminded me he found something else just a little bit ago. Look at that. It's a whole uh, pocket watch. Bezel. Yep. That's in good shape. I guess the innards were uh, yep. shot for him or something. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, as you can see, it's nuts how many bottles are here. So many sodas. And then Chris found something. I let out a yip. Yeah. I tell you what, hold on. We're just gonna let him look at it. Will you look at that? <laughs> that is so freaking cool. Go ahead, tell him what Let's it is. See, it's Elvis. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. It's a wallet. Oh look my gosh. That. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. He says it says rock and roll on the bottom. Oh, oh man, that's. Do you think there's anything in it? Oh gosh, if there's money in it, that's amazing. Oh yeah. Here, you go ahead and open it. Ooh. Ooh. Right, take a peek, any? Nope. I don't think so. Oh my gosh, it's awesome, Look though. Man, what a cool, cool piece. <laughs> I wonder, I've never seen that one. It says rock and roll down the bottom corner. Oh, Elvis Presley. Race. Lemonade. Dude, that is awesome. <laughs> one of those things you just don't expect at all. You never know what's going to come out of that <laughs> hole. <laughs> or the trash pit. Dude, that's awesome. Now, when I saw that wallet, I had a feeling it was a special piece. You know, I thought it was a pretty early looking piece. And when I got it home and I cleaned the backside off, it actually had a copyright date on the bottom. And the year was 1956. And it was an original piece from the Elvis Presley Enterprises. Well, when I started researching that piece, I was blown away. It was a very rare piece, and non-dug examples had price tags of $500 on them. Now, I am so glad that Chris was able to save that awesome piece of history. And I have to say, I have never seen one of those come out of the ground, and I don't think I ever will again. Now, don't go anywhere just yet. I have some very cool historical photos coming up in just a few seconds, and I think you'll really enjoy seeing them. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure, and I cannot wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.